Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism, Dr. Umar Johnson. I'm coming through for a very brief, a very brief Black Parent Seminar this Monday morning. Good, good Garby Day to everyone. I wanted to drop by because I've been getting bombarded with questions and requests for assistance from parents as it relates to school discipline. So what I want to do today is I just want to go over briefly. I should keep you no more than 30 minutes. You got to get the work. I have some things I need to do today as well. So the topic is school discipline. We want to deal with school discipline this morning. Ah, so I'm going to start by going over basic things that all parents should know about discipline, whether your child is in regular education or special education, okay? So I'm gonna go over discipline for charter and public schools. Discipline for charter and public schools overall is what I'm going to begin with. After I'm done with overall disciplinary procedure that you should know, I am then gonna deal specifically with parents of special education children, i.e. children who have IEPs. If they have an IEP, they are a special ed student, and in which case the discipline procedures are a little different. They are somewhat uh, more protected than regular students. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, when a child is being suspended from school, if a child is being suspended from school, okay, or even if they're being given a detention, even if they're going to be excluded from a particular activity, okay, the child has a right to a hearing. It's called due process, procedural due process in the school. Your child has a right to a hearing whether it's with the principal, the vice principal, the dean of students, who is ever given out the discipline, your child has a right to a hearing with that person. And at this hearing, three things must happen. Whenever your child is suspended, reprimanded, and or will receive some sort of disciplinary sanction or punishment, three things must happen. Number one, the child must be informed as to the charges against him or her. The child must be informed as to the charges against him or her. So that's number one. If your child ever comes home and says, I was suspended and I don't know why, the school broke the law. Okay? The school broke the law. Your child has an equal protection under the law, 14th Amendment, which follows them into the school. So there's no such thing as you're being suspended and you don't know why. Parents, please keep that in mind. A child has a right to know the charges against them. Number two, the child has a right to know the evidence that the school official has to substantiate those charges. Okay? So if your child comes home and says, I was suspended for smoking weed, and you say, did you have any weed? And they say, no. And you say, so how did they suspend you? And the child says, I don't know. The principal just said, I was smoking weed and I'm being suspended. I wasn't told whether he smelled it in my locker, whether he saw a, a, a black and mild rapper, nothing. That is against the law. A child must know the charges against them and a child must know the evidence, okay? Your child has a right to know the charges and your child has a right to know the evidence. Parents, please take this seriously because the disciplinary rights of black children and black parents are being trampled on, stepped upon on a regular basis all day long. He must know the charges against him and he must know the evidence against him. And thirdly, the third thing, okay, so the child must know the charges against them. The child must know the evidence against them. And the third thing, the child has a right to refute the charges. Your child has a right to speak. Your child has a right to defend him or herself in school. Yes, they do. So if the child says, I was suspended and I wasn't even allowed to give my side of the story, that's a violation of the law. Yes, 
And I know some of you are saying my son is never given a chance to tell his side of the story. That's because they're breaking the law. A child always has a right to know their side of the story. And black parents, it is your job to force the school to respect your son or daughter's rights. They have a right to know the charge. They have a right to know the evidence. They have a right to refute the charges, to speak up for themselves and to defend the situation. They cannot be railroaded. I must know why I'm in trouble. I must know the evidence that got me in trouble and I have a right to speak and argue my case. Okay, now, for regular ed children, or any child, because we're dealing with everybody right now. Special ed is going to come in a minute. A child can only be suspended 10 days per incident. A child can only be suspended from school 10 days per incident. This includes charter schools. And charter schools get away with murder because most black parents treat charter schools like they're private schools. Let me say that one more time. Charter schools do whatever the hell they want to do to black children because you black parents let them get away with it because you think they're doing you a favor by letting your child go to that school. You don't understand that your child has a right to be at that school unless they break some sort of law or violate some sort of law that could lead to them being removed. A charter school by law is an alternative public school. Let me say it again. A charter school by law is an alternative public school. Let me say it again. A charter school anywhere in the United States is an alternative public school. They must follow many of the same procedures. So if you get a suspension notice from a charter school saying your child is being suspended and they have not been given their due process, meaning a hearing where they've been informed of the charges, the evidence to support those charges, as well as a right to defend themselves, then the charter school is breaking the law. The charter school must follow the same disciplinary procedure as the public school. In other words, your child's due process rights, okay, must be followed by the charter school and the public school. There is no difference between them. The charter and public school must uphold your child's right to due process, i.e., a fair hearing. If you get a suspension notice from a charter school and they say your child has been suspended for 11 days. If you get a notice from the public school, your child has been suspended for 11 days. If you get a notice from a charter or public school saying your child has been suspended for 11 days, they're breaking the law. How is an 11 day suspension breaking the law? An 11-day suspension is breaking the law because the law only allows 10 days at a time. The law only allows 10 days at a time. The law only allows, parents remember this, 10 days at a time. If you get a suspension for 11 days, that is called a temporary expulsion. 11 days or more removal of a child from school is a temporary expulsion. 11 day or more removal of a child from school is called what parents a temporary expulsion it is called a temporary expulsion and a principal cannot temporarily expel a child a principal one second here my instagram people said i'm leaving them out so let me get my instagram people Okay, a okay, eleven days removal from school or more is temporary expulsion. The only entity that can temporarily expel a child is the local school board. The only entity that can temporarily expel a child is the local school board. Charter school must follow the same rules. So if I'm the principal of a charter school, which I formally am, okay, and formally assistant principal as well. If I want to expel a child at a charter school, I'm a charter school principal, I must recommend to the charter school board, the board of directors, the board of operators, the board of trustees, whatever you want to call it. The charter school board is the only entity that can expel. They're the only entity that can remove a child for 11 days or more. So as a charter or public school principal, I can only refer downtown to the local public school board. I can only refer to my charter school board 
that Umar Johnson be removed from school for 11 days, 12 days, 13 days, 14 days, 15 days, however many days I want for violating a particular code of the discipline policy. Okay? Okay, parents? So you should never get a suspension for 11 days unless it comes from the board. And guess what? The board cannot expel a child temporarily or permanently unless you have a hearing. A board cannot suspend a child, excuse me, cannot expel a child. Principals suspend, boards expel. Principals can suspend, boards expel. Principals do not need to have a hearing with a parent before they suspend a child. They must have a hearing with the child, but they do not have to have a hearing with the parent. Let me say that again. A principal does not need to call you in to suspend your child. They simply have to have a hearing with the child. But if the board, if the school board or charter school board plans to expel your child, they must have a hearing with the parent. Is everybody clear? Expulsion, parent hearing, suspension, principal hearing. Expulsion is only done by the board, the parent must have a hearing. Suspension is done by the principal, parent does not have to have a hearing, child must have a hearing. Is everybody clear? Okay? Suspension, expulsion. Suspensions are done by the principal, expulsion is done by the school board. Suspensions require a hearing with the child, expulsions require a hearing with the parent. Everybody's clear on that. The removal of a child for 11 days or more is called a temporary expulsion and you can only temporarily expel a child after a hearing and it must be done by the board, okay? Expulsions are not always permanent. I know kids, I know a kid who just got suspended for 20 days. That's a temporary expulsion. That's a 20-day expulsion. He comes back to school after 20 days, life goes on. If they expel your child from the school permanently, then that's a permanent expulsion. But please keep in mind, when you have an expulsion hearing, when you have an expulsion hearing, when you have an expulsion hearing downtown, the school board loves to catch black parents off guard and they don't like to give you enough time to prepare for your child's expulsion hearing. In which case, it becomes your responsibility to let the school board know that you did not give me enough time to prepare for my child's expulsion hearing. And one of the reasons why they don't give black parents enough time to prepare for their child's expulsion hearing is because they don't respect you and they know you don't know your rights. Let me say it again. They don't respect you. They do not respect back black parents. And one of the reasons they don't respect black parents is not just because you're black, but it's because we have a habit of letting them treat us and our children any way they want. Let me say that again. One of the reasons we don't get respect is because we have a habit of letting the school board treat us any kind of way they want to, okay? And what happens is when you get one black parent who decides to fight and stand up for their child, they have to fight not only the white racists or the coons at the school, they have to fight against of all the parents who came before them who did not fight for their child. In other words, when you fight for your child, you have to fight against the fact that so many black parents came before you and let the school do whatever they wanted to do for your child. That's why it's so hard for black parents who fight because the 100 parents before you didn't do a damn thing. That's why it's so hard when black parents fight because the 100 parents who came before you didn't do anything to protect or save their child, okay? So you need to write the school board and say, I received my expulsion. I received my expulsion hearing. It is for Thursday. Today is Monday. You're giving me 72 hours to prepare for an expulsion hearing. That is disrespectful and it is unprofessional. I am demanding that the expulsion hearing be postponed for at least another week or another two weeks. Now, the way school boards operate is they try to get all the expulsion hearings done at the next school board meeting. So let's say your son did something yesterday that requires an expulsion. The school board hearing is on Wednesday and the school board may only have a hearing once a month. So guess what? They say, we just got a, a recommendation for an expulsion. 
from a principal at We Hate Black People Charter School or We Hate Black People Public School, our hearing for the month is tomorrow. So you might get an emergency letter certified telling you today that you have an expulsion hearing for your child tomorrow. Then it becomes your responsibility to go down there. Don't call. Don't call. When it's that important, you go. You go down there and you say, listen, I just got this. How are you going to give me less than 24 hours to prepare? I have a right to due process. And due process means that I have a right to inspect the evidence and to see the file and the record. Go down there and request a complete record of all documents pertaining to your child's expulsion because you plan to resist. Yes, if you can afford an attorney, get an attorney. By all means, if you can afford a lawyer for the due process expulsion hearing, please get one. But if you can't, at least be prepared. What are your rights at an expulsion hearing? You have a right to know the charges against your child. You have a right to a hearing with the school board. You have a right to see the evidence, brothers and sisters. This is where the school boards often violate the rights of black parents. You have a right to see the evidence against your child. You can inspect the evidence. You can question the evidence. You have a right to present your own evidence. Yes, you have a right to present your own evidence. One of your child's friend's parents might be willing to have their child testify. One of your child's parents might be willing to let their child testify on your child's behalf. You have a right to do that. I would like to bring a witness, two of my child's classmates who were present in the hallway at the time that Miss Slurbanowski claimed that my son pushed her. These two children were in the hallway. Their parents are here and they will be testifying today. I have Rashida Jones and I have Randy Jackson. Rashida, please come on up and tell the school board what you saw. Randy Jackson, please come on up and tell the school board what you saw. You can do that. Yes, you can present witnesses as a parent without a lawyer. Yes, you can inspect the evidence as a parent without a lawyer. Yes, you can ask questions of anybody there involved in the case. You can cross-examine anyone who testifies against your child. These are the rights in the United States as it pertains to the expulsion of children from school. You have a right to cross-examine. You have a right to bring witnesses. You are, in essence, your child's attorney, okay? Quote, unquote, you are, in essence, your child's attorney or advocate at the expulsion hearing, okay? You also have a right to appeal. And you should always ask, what are the appealing this, uh, protocol, directions? If they say we have heard you and we have decided to expel, you can appeal that. And you should then ask, I am a requesting an appeal of this decision, which is my legal right. Please provide me with the protocol, process, and procedure by which I will appeal this decision because that's exactly what I intend to do. And if I were you, if I were you, if I were you, and my child goes to a predominantly white school, let me talk to the black parents whose kids are only like one black kid in the whole class, or one of 20 black kids in the whole school, or uh, there's just a handful of black kids in that whole school. Some of your children go to schools where it's just a couple specks of pepper in a whole sea of salt. If your child happens to be a speck of pepper and an entire sea of salt, and they expel my child for something that they did not do, guess what I'm doing? I am automatically writing a letter to the United States Department of Education Office of Civil Rights. I am automatically going to write a letter to the United States Department of Education Office of Civil Rights requesting an investigation into unfair, racist, biased, and discriminatory discipline practices against my child at We Hate Black People Public School in Outback, Massachusetts, or Outback, Pennsylvania, or Outback, New Jersey, or Outback, Florida, or Outback, Illinois, or Outback, Michigan, or Outback, California, or Outback, Arizona, or Outback, Utah, or Outback, Arkansas. If that school is mostly white and your child is just a couple specks of pepper and a sea of salt, you take it further. You take it further. 
Now, if the school is predominantly black, as it is with most of our children, you follow the procedures I just discussed. But you always remember that you have a right to an appeal. Black parents are routinely violated at expulsion hearings. Routinely violated. They don't even give you time to prepare. They don't give you no evidence or anything. They treat the expulsion like it's a foregone conclusion. And Dr. Umar Johnson is here to tell you the expulsion is not a foregone conclusion. Your child's expulsion from school is not a foregone conclusion. You have rights. You have rights. And another right as at the expulsion hearing is a right to, to not self-incriminate. Your child has a right to plead the fifth at the expulsion hearing. Oh, yes. Your child has a right to plead the fifth at an expulsion hearing, just like you have a right to plead the fifth in court. That's right. He does not have to testify. Your child can say, I don't feel comfortable. I'd rather not. Yes, they cannot be forced to testify. It might be better if they did, particularly if they are articulate. Well, if you got some little ghetto kid, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Nah, fam, I didn't do it. You know what I mean? I was just getting on my game. You know what I mean? I was howling at the shorty. If you get up there and act like a coon, y'all going to lose. So if your son is a coon and you never taught him how to articulate, particularly at particular hearings, because we don't have a problem with the hood language. We all speak it. That's our code. But you have to learn how to code switch. And you black parents have done a horrible job teaching your children how to code switch. Listen, son, when we get in here, don't talk like that in here. Standard English because it's about your impression. Okay. You got a whole bunch of white folks. So you got a couple coons on the school board. And if you get up here acting like a coon, and some corner thug, we going to lose. Dress him up. Don't let him go in there looking like no thug. Dress him up. Suit and tie. I don't care if he never wore one a day in his life. This is an expulsion. This is his life. This is school to prison. You don't let him walk in there. Pants sagging. You know what I mean? Extra medium. Uh, young GZT with the neck drunk. Nah, fam. It ain't that type of party. Sunglasses. One eye missing. Nah, family. Suit and tie. Give them a different image. Image is everything. Image is everything. Don't let your son go in there looking like some damn thug. Suit and tie. And this is another reason why I don't support black parents letting their teens get all these tattoos all over their face. What do you think they're going to think if your son or daughter goes to an expulsion hearing? Your son or daughter goes to an expulsion hearing and they got tattoos all on their face. 718. 215-773-313. What do you think? 917. What do you think? 609. What do you think they're going to think with a big 609-215-313-773? Okay. Tattoos, airdrops, all. Come on. You're playing into the stereotype. Your child can't afford to uh, play into the stereotype. Now, a parent asked me about children being searched at school. Can, you, can the school search your child? Can the school search your child? And the answer is it depends. And it depends on a couple things. And I'm going to just give you three of the things that it depends on. Can the school search your child or their belongings? It depends. It depends on whether the thing being searched is owned by the school or owned by the student. <clears throat> it depends where the child is when they're being searched. It depends, I would argue, if the child is a male or a female. And it mostly depends on whether or not the school has something known as reasonable suspicion reasonable suspicion if you remember last night we talked about police needing to have probable cause that a suspect is dangerous or a felon dangerous and a felon before they can shoot right by law police cannot shoot unless the person is both a felon dangerous and there's no other way to arrest them except to subdue them by force right Police need probable cause. Police need probable cause. If the school calls the police into the school for your child and says, I think he got crack on him. I think he's selling crack. 
The police cannot search your child. They cannot search the locker. They cannot search the book bag unless they have probable cause. Police cannot search your kids in school unless they have probable cause. But guess what? School staff can search your child. All they need is reasonable suspicion. I'm going to say this again. Police need probable cause. But the principal, the vice principal, the dean of students, reasonable suspicion. The police have a higher standard of burden. The school has a lower standard of burden. And the reason the school has a lower standard of burden is because the school has to protect the lives of hundreds of other children. The reason the school doesn't need probable cause, all the school needs is reasonable suspicion. And the reason the school has a lower threshold of burden is because they are obligated to protect the lives of other children, especially in the post-Columbine America, especially in the post-Parkland, Florida America, especially in the post-Sandy Hook America. Do you understand, brothers and sisters? Do you understand, brothers and sisters? Reasonable suspicion means you better have a justifiable reason other than the fact that my child is black and or you don't like them for why you went into their locker. Even though the locker is school property, even though the school locker is school property, because it is being used by my child, okay, you going into that locker is a violation of privacy unless you have a reasonable suspicion, which basically means a damn good reason. Let's just keep it gangster. Reasonable suspicion means a damn good reason. Police need to have more than a damn good reason. But school staff only needs to have a damn good reason, okay? Police need probable cause. School staff need reasonable suspicion. And then they can go in and they can search, okay? If the child is a female, now let me say this. If they plan to, to search the body of your child, if they want to search the person of your child, they want to search your child's body. If they're going to search the child's body, they better be able to really defend that because searching the body is considered more invasive than searching the book bag or the locker. Does everybody understand? Searching the person is more invasive than searching the book bag or the locker. They still only need probable cause, but again, they better be able to justify it. And under no circumstances should a male search a female student body. Under no circumstances should a male search a female student's body. And if a male school police or, or school administrator needs to search your daughter, a female needs to be present. A female needs to be present. And this is why in most schools, and this is why in most schools, brothers and sisters, this is why in most, whoa, <laughs> trying to take care of Instagram. This is why in most schools, they normally ask the child, empty out your book bag. They normally ask the child, empty out your pocketbook. They normally ask the child, empty out your locker. They normally ask the child, take everything out of your pockets and put it on the table. You know why they do that? Because that protects them. That protects them from being liable for violating your child's privacy. If your child voluntarily empties the book bag, if your child voluntarily empties the pockets, if your child voluntarily empties the pocketbook, then technically they did not search your child. Everybody understand me. That's why they would say empty out everything. That way to school. Did you search him? I did not. We simply asked him to empty everything out and he complied. Can your child refuse? Yes. Do I recommend it? No. If they're innocent, go ahead and do it. If they're innocent, go ahead and do it. If they're guilty, I would probably say no because now the school is burdened with having a reasonable suspicion to search my locker, search my pocketbook, search my person, search my book bag. Does everybody understand, parents? The school needs a reasonable suspicion. They don't need probable cause. But even with a reasonable suspicion, they better have a damn good reason. So most schools would err on the side of caution and simply ask the child to empty everything out. That way, 
I didn't touch them. I didn't search them. They voluntarily complied with my request to empty the contents of their bag or book bag. Okay? Okay? Now, let's talk about, oh, one other thing. Remember I said it also depends where it took place. Where did the disciplinary infraction took place? Your son gets into a fight 20 blocks from school. Does the school have jurisdiction to suspend them? Your child gets into a fight 20 blocks away from school. Can the school suspend or expel those kids for that big gang fight they had 20 blocks away from school? What do you think? What do you think? They're not on school property. They know where around there. Can the school get involved in the discipline for that child? The answer is yes. Although they are not on school property, it is a school-related incident. Those kids were coming from school. They were going to school. It was after the basketball game. It was after the school trip. It doesn't have to be on the property. If it was related to the school, the school has jurisdiction. It's no different if your son is dating a girl at school and he decides to upload nude pictures of her on YouTube because he found out that she was dating a kid in another class, the school has jurisdiction. He will be expelled from school. He will be expelled from school because it was school related. His girlfriend from where? School. They go to school. They wouldn't know each other without school. This whole situation started in school and it carried over to the neighborhood. Yes, the school has jurisdiction. And I'm going to tell you parents something right now. I'm going to tell you black parents something right now. Two of the biggest reasons black kids are being suspended and expelled right now. Two of the biggest reasons black kids are being suspended and expelled right now. Number one. Is. Videos. Photos. Either nude. Or bullying another child. Cyber bullying is very big. Your child uploads a video disrespecting another child in the school, talking about them, disrespecting them, verbally abusing them. He will be expelled from that. Your daughter will be expelled from that. Oh, yes. Cyberbullying. You better talk to your kids. It can cost them their educational career. You better talk to your kids. It will cost them their educational career if it is discovered that they are cyberbullying another child. Yes, school does not stop at three o'clock. School does not stop at three o'clock. School does not stop at three o'clock. That is considered cyber bullying. Let your children know that. You don't upload anything about anybody from your school. I know a kid who got expelled from school for videotaping a fight between a student and a teacher. Did y'all hear what I said? She, the teacher got into a fight with a student. She uploaded it to YouTube. She got expelled. The argument was she violated school privacy rules, okay? The teacher is an adult. The child is a private citizen. You had no business to disclose their personal encounter in school, even though it was in front of the class, with the entire world. They got expelled. You better be talking to your children. You better be talking to your children. You better be talking to your children. Cyberbullying is off the hook. Now, black parents... If you don't have a copy of your child's school district or charter school code of conduct, you cooning. If you haven't read the entire student code of conduct for your school district, you're cooning. A black parent cannot afford with our sons and daughters being suspended and expelled more than the sons of daughters of any other race. You cannot afford to not know what is expellable and what is suspendable. What am I talking about? Our kids are being suspended for offenses that are only in after-school detention. Our children are being expelled for offenses that are only suspendable. Yes, they break the law because you don't read. They break the law because you don't read. You'd be surprised how many parents I know went to an expulsion hearing without the code of conduct. Sometimes you can win simply by saying, wait, this says that what he did should only be a 10-day suspension. What he did is a seven-day suspension. 
First offense is a suspension. Why are we here? You're breaking the law. Case close. Case close. Case close. Get the code of conduct and read it and know it. So you can say, why was he suspended? According to the school district, first offense profanity or chewing gum is a two day after school suspension. Why is my son getting, excuse me, two day after school detention? Why is my son being suspended for something for which he should only receive a detention? Read the code of conduct. Read the code of conduct. You must know the code of conduct, brothers and sisters. This is very important. And you should know that an in-school suspension is treated like an out-of-school suspension. Black parents, black parents, I'm going to say it again. An in-school suspension must be treated like an out-of-school suspension. So you say, Dr. Umar, are you telling me that if my son is going to receive an in-school suspension, he must still get a hearing? where he's apprised of the charges and presented with the evidence and has a right to defend himself? Yes, in-school suspension is the same as out-of-school suspension. Yes, yes, they are still being excluded from learning in the class. It is a removal from instruction. It is a suspension. Don't let them get over on you. In-school suspension is just like an out-of-school suspension. Ah! I'm trying to do this apple cider vinegar, but I'm not winning. Woo! Now, another thing they love to do, brothers and sisters, another thing they love to do is they love to call you and tell you to come pick up your son or daughter. We're not going to put it on the record. Just come get him. We're not going to put it on the record. Just come get them. Now, there are situations where I might allow that. If your son is a trifling Negro, pick his ass up. Let's just keep it real. Some of our kids are straight Negroes, okay? They don't respect nothing. They don't do nothing. You raise them wrong, okay? Let's just keep it real. If your child is a straight Negro, guess what? Pick his ass up, okay? Be honest with yourself. Say, yeah, my son is a straight up thug. He's a coon. He's a Negro. He don't care about his education. He don't respect nobody. Go get his ass before he get locked up. Go get him. Pick him up. Every time they call you, pick him up. But if your kid is a regular kid who gets in trouble from time to time, nothing big, don't pick him up. Especially if your child is only a speck of salt, a speck of pepper in a sea of salt. You want the white schools to record those suspensions. You want the white schools to sus record those suspensions. You want to know why? Because once they get too many of them, five days, five days, five days, three days, eight days, ten days, nine days, seven days, five days, two days, one day, add up. I'm filing a complaint with the United States Department of Education Office of Civil Rights. Systematic discrimination of my son on the basis of race being denied an education for nothing more than his color. When white kids do the same thing, they don't get into it. So it all depends on where they at and who they with, what they doing. And what type of child they are. Now, let's move into special education. Let's move into special education. Let's move into special education. But before we move into special education discipline, because it's different, special ed too much about your child. If the school is complaining too much about your child, hire a mental health professional to go into the classroom and observe your child. I hope y'all listening to me. Regular ed or special ed. If the teacher is constantly complaining about your son or daughter's behavior, hire a behavior specialist, a school psychologist, a clinical social worker, a professional counselor. Hire one of them to go into your child's classroom to observe your child. An independent outside observation. An independent outside observation. Hire them to go into the school to observe your child to see if the teacher is exaggerating because they do exaggerate and they do lie on our children. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. 
They exaggerate and they lie on our boys all the time. Yes, they do. So what you have to do is be proactive. Hey, Dr. Umar Johnson, I live in Philadelphia. Okay. My son's teacher keeps on complaining. Wherever you live, you call a counselor, behavior specialist, psychologist, social worker. I would like to hire you to go into my child's classroom and observe my child. How much do you charge? It shouldn't cost you more than $100 an hour. You only need three hours. It shouldn't cost you more than $100 an hour. You only need three hours. You want the outside observer to observe your child. You want the outside observer to observe your child. Three different times, three different days, three different weeks under three different circumstances or classes. Okay, let me break it down. Week number one, I'm going in the first week of April on Monday, 8 o'clock. I'm going to observe your son during literature. I'm going in the second week of April, 11 o'clock. I'm going to observe your son during math. I'm going in the third week of April, two o'clock. I'm going to observe your son during transition time, lunch, and into his shop class. I'm going to observe him for 60 minutes each time. This is what you want to tell the person you're hiring. I'm hiring you to go in to observe for 60 minutes, three different days, three different weeks, three different times. You cannot do one observation, parents. And the reason you cannot do one observation is because your kid could have had a really bad day. It was a fluke. Or your kid could have had a really good day. It was a fluke. So you need multiple observations. You might say, I want to hire you five different observations or 10 different observations. I don't think you need more than 10. You really don't need more than seven, okay? Three minimum, no more than 10, okay? $50 an hour, $75 an hour, $25 an hour. If somebody charges you more than $100 an hour, unless they come highly recommended, you don't need that. Find somebody for you know $100 or less. And then you tell them once you're done your observations, we're going to sit down with the school team and we're going to meet. We're going to sit down with the school team and we're going to meet and you're going to give us some recommendations and ideas for how we can control my son's behavior. After the observations, you're going to come with me into the school. I'm going to pay you for that extra hour so you can sit down and tell them what you saw. And guess what? That psychologist, that specialist, that counselor, that social worker may actually tell you, I didn't see your son do anything inappropriate. I observed that boy five different days, five different times, five different classes. He was regular. Was he off task? Yes, sometimes, as a regular kid should be. But he was no worse than anyone else. But guess what I saw, T Principal Silverstein? And guess what I saw, classroom teacher Slurbanowski? And guess what I saw, Mrs. Tutankhamen, Hotep mom? Guess what I saw? There's a white boy in that class. There's a white boy in that class whose behavior was way worse than your child. In fact, there were two kids in that class who were the most disruptive kids I've ever seen. Your child was nothing like them. So I'm wondering what is being done in the class to deal with them because they seem to trigger everybody else. Did you complain to their mothers? Did you call up their mothers? Oh yes, your independent outside observer could shut it down. Your independent outside observer can shut it down. And one of the big mistakes that black parents make is y'all assume teachers are telling you the truth. Why do you assume the teacher is telling you the truth? Why do you assume that the teacher is telling the truth? You cannot assume that the teacher is telling the truth because they often lie. Yes, they pe they're regular people. They lie. White people don't like black people. We know that. They don't like your kids. They don't like you. What did I say on last night's live feed? They don't make a difference between the ages of black males. Whether you're 5, 15, 25, 55, 105, you will be treated and punished like a grown man. Everybody know the case of George Steiny, rest in peace. George Steiny, the youngest person ever executed in America, young black boy for a crime he didn't even commit, for which he was later exonerated a couple years ago. They executed that little black boy. What was he, 11 years old, 12 years old? Was it South Carolina, I think it was, Georgia? 
George Steiny. Y'all know the case. Look it up on YouTube. Youngest person ever executed in America, a black boy, for allegedly killing two white girls. When the two white girls could have probably whipped his ass because he was a small brother. Rest in peace to him. Condolences to the family. They don't put black boys in groups by age. We are all men, and you better teach your son that. And this is why black parents need to be consistent with your discipline at home. This is why black parents need to be consistent with your discipline at home, parents. At home, you must be consistent with the discipline. Punishments and rewards. And when you go into these classrooms, you need to ask the teachers, what are you doing to maintain discipline? It's not all about the parent. The teacher's discipline program cannot merely consist of them calling you. The teacher's discipline program cannot merely consist of them calling you. I'm going to say it one more time. The teacher's discipline program cannot merely consist of them calling you. You're not in the class. All behavior is a function of where it takes place and the consequences that follow. All behavior is a function of where it takes place and the consequences that follow. It's not your class. You don't work in the school and you're not there to provide consequences afterwards. But I'm going to tell y'all a little secret. You can change behavior more by paying attention to the good things children do than paying attention to the negative. Yes, you must punish. You must punish. You don't ignore punishment. But you must have rewards as well. But parents, you don't reward a child every time they do something right. You reward a child when they earn it and after they have achieved a certain threshold or a certain ratio of the desired behavior. In other words, you only give a reward at the end of the week, the end of the month, the end of the day, end of the marking period, end of the year. The older the child, the longer they should have to go without a reward. If you're dealing with a 12th grader, you get a reward at the end of the marking period. Fifth grader, you might get a reward. Now let's talk special ed. Special ed parents, pay attention. Special ed parents, pay attention. Special ed parents, it's time for you to pay attention. Everything I said applies to you as well. Everything I just went over these first 48 minutes applies to regular and special. But now what I'm about to say only applies to children with IEPs. And it applies to all children with IEPs. Whether they're speech and language, whether they're deaf, whether they're blind, orthopedic impairment, traumatic brain injury, learning disability, other health impairment for ADHD, mental retardation, emotional disturbance, multiple disabilities, Everything I'm about to say applies to your child if they have an IEP. It doesn't matter if they full-time, part-time, pull-out, resource, it don't matter. Everything I'm about to say applies to every special ed child in the America and related territories, okay? Yes, I will be in London Saturday. God willing, I will be speaking in London this Saturday, London, England, first visit since 2014 if you want to see the prince of pan-africanism live in london for the first time in four years you can get your tickets right now at seriustickets.com that is s-i-r-i-u-s tickets.com s-i-r-i-u-s tickets.com to see the prince of pan-africanism live in london england this saturday and then i will be in shreveport louisiana the following saturday to honor the late great reverend dr martin luther king jr in shreve Port, Louisiana on the 14th. I will be speaking from 2 o'clock until 3 o'clock. The whole event, I believe, is from noon until 5, but Dr. Umar will be speaking from 2 until 3 in Shreveport, Louisiana, April the 14th. And then the following Saturday, I will be in Paris, France. Paris, France on the 21st of April for the Pan-African Conference in Paris, France. Okay? And then the last Saturday of April, which is the 28th, I'm not currently booked, okay? So if somebody wants that Saturday, you better put in a request right now because you know I am the most requested black scholar on the face of the earth. And you can put in that request to Dr. Umar Speaks at yahoo.com, D-R, Umar Speaks at yahoo.com, okay? So let's talk about special ed. If you noticed earlier, I said that a regular ed child can only be suspended 10 days per incident, right? 
11 days or more is a temporary expulsion. But that 10 days for the regular kids has no limit to how many times it is put in place. In other words, you could be suspended 10 days in September, 10 days in October, 10 days in November. You could be suspended the first 10 days of December and then the first 10 days in January and then the last 10 days in January. There's no limit to how many times you can suspend a regular child 10 days. Does everybody understand? I'm going to say it one more time. There is no limit to how many times you can suspend a regular ed child from school for 10 days. There is no Winnie Mandela passed away. Why did somebody say rest in peace, Winnie Mandela? Queen Mother Winnie Mandela passed away. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I just got noticed, brothers and sisters, that Queen Mother Winnie Mandela, the mother of the South African freedom struggle, I would say the Queen Mother of Pan-African revolution all across the world has just passed away, brothers and sisters. I wanted to meet her and I never had the chance. I was in South Africa multiple times. We wasn't able to cross paths. I went to her restaurant. One of the first books I read on black liberation was Winnie Mandela's and part of my soul went with him. Brothers and sisters, please read her book and part of my soul went with him from Winnie Mandela. I read it in high school at the Scotland School for Veterans Children. It was the first revolutionary book I ever read in my life. I'm going to ask for a moment of silence. Ashe, brothers and sisters. Ashe, brothers and sisters. Rest in peace, the Queen Mother Winnie Mandela. Oh my God. We just lost a Queen Mother. We just lost not just a talking Queen Mother. She was a working Queen Mother. She was in the struggle, brothers and sisters. Went to jail. She was beat. She was abused. She never turned her back on Nelson. She never turned her back on the freedom struggle. She was unapologetically African to the end of her days. She was unapologetically African until the end of her days. And you can say what you want to say about Jacob Zuma. You can say what you want to say about Jacob Zuma. But Jacob Zuma was the first president of South Africa to give Queen Mother Winnie Mandela the respect that she was entitled to in terms of providing her with security, in terms of providing her with her own chaperone and car, in terms of looking out for her best interests. Okay, he may not have been perfect, but I respect Jacob Zuma for looking out for Queen Mother Winnie Mandela. And I'm going to pray to God that this was not foul play because we know what's going on in South Africa right now. I don't like the timing. I'm going to pray that this was natural, that this was the ancestors who decided it was a time to come. We're going to hope and pray that it was Almighty God who decided that it was time for Queen Mother Winnie Mandela to go. And we're going to hope that this had nothing to do with the apartheid power structure. We're going to hope that this had absolutely nothing to do with the apartheid power structure, given the fact that South Africa right now is on the brink of another revolution to acquire the land that was unjustifiably, illegally, and improperly stolen from our ancestors hundreds of years ago and had never been returned even after the fall of apartheid in 1994. So we're going to hope that there was no foul play because I don't like the timing. Brothers and sisters, I don't like the timing. Brothers and sisters, I don't like the timing at all, okay? We're not going to entertain anything because we don't know the facts, but my brothers and sisters in South Africa, my brothers and sisters who are in South Africa right now, my brothers and sisters who are in South Africa right now, please get me some details. I'm scheduled to speak in South Africa June the 6th, the 15th, but I want to go to her funeral. 
South Africa, if you could please, somebody from South Africa, please let Dr. Umar know when and where and what time is Queen Mother Winnie Mandela's funeral. If you in America, once I get the details for her funeral and some of you want to go with me, once I get the details for her funeral and some of you want to go with me, brothers and sisters, I'm willing to go with some supporters. I don't want no haters with me. OK, but if you are a supporter of Dr. Umar and you love Queen Mother Winnie Mandela and what she has meant to the global Pan-African struggle and you want to go with me, I'm willing to have other brothers and sisters go with me. OK, somebody let me know as soon as possible, South Africa. Those tickets are not cheap to South Africa. They are not cheap. So as soon as the information is released on the day time and place of her funeral including the procession because i know we might not get inside the funeral i know we might not get inside the funeral okay but at least we can be there to witness the procession i want to be in south africa for that i want to be in south africa for that if there's anybody who deserves for us to fly halfway across the world to honor their life it's queen mother winnie mandela it's queen mother harry queen mother winnie mandela I almost said Harriet Tubman. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. So rest in peace to her. My condolences to the Mandela family. We lost. We lost the treasure, brothers and sisters. We lost the treasure. Who knows? Maybe the Prince of Pan-Africanism will be invited to say a few words of, about Winnie Mandela's impact on the struggle here in America. Maybe the Prince of Pan-Africanism will be invited to say a few words on Queen Mother Winnie Mandela's impact. Okay. And if there's going to be any celebrations in South Africa before or after the funeral, I want to know about that, too. If there's going to be any celebrations about her before or after, please let me know. Let me get into this. Rest in peace, Queen Mother Winnie Mandela. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Okay. Earlier, I said a regular ed child can only be suspended 10 days at a time. But there's no limit to how many times they can be suspended for those 10 days, right? Well, guess what? For special ed kids, they can only be suspended 10 days total. For special ed kids, they can only be suspended 10 days total. Do you see the difference? Regular children can be suspended 10 days every time. A regular child can be suspended 10 days every time. A special ed child can only be suspended 10 days total total does everybody understand me if you are the parent of a special ed child you need to be keeping a running total of your child's suspensions remember in school suspension counts the same as out of school if your child had five days out of school suspension five days in school suspension that's 10 that's 10 in school and out of school are the same in the eyes of the law in school suspension and out of school suspension are the same in the eyes of the law. If your child had three days out of school, seven days in school suspension, that's 10. What happens to a special ed child once they reach 10 days of suspension? What happens to a special ed child once they reach 10 days of suspension? Once that child has reached 10 days, total, the whole school year, you only get 10. Beyond 10 days, the removal of a special ed child is considered a change of placement. After 10 days, the removal of a special ed child is considered a change of placement, a disciplinary change of placement. If your child has an IEP, if your child has an IEP, brothers and sisters, please listen to what I'm about to say. Please listen to what I'm about to say. If your child has already been suspended 10. The school cannot suspend 11 or more. No more days. No more days for the rest of the year unless the IEP team. Listen to me, special parents. This is important. The IEP team must come together and they must decide if the behavior for which the child is about to be suspended is a manifestation of their disability. I need you to listen to me well. I need you to listen to me well. Okay? Beyond 10 days, 
A special ed child cannot be suspended if those behaviors for which they are being suspended was a manifestation of their disability. In other words, any removal of a child with an IEP after 10 days. In other words, your child already had 10 days. They want to suspend her for one day for fighting. One day for fighting, that will be 11 days. One day for fighting. They cannot do it unless the IEP team comes together. And they must decide if that fight, if the fight or the behavior that led to the fight, whether or not, whether or not that behavior was caused by or has a direct relationship to the disability. Did y'all hear what I said? Was the behavior in question caused by your child's disability or did it have a direct relationship to the disability? Let me give you an example. But before the example, let me review. A special ed kid can only be suspended 10 days. Any days after 10 constitute a change in placement. Let me say it again. A special ed kid can only be suspended how many days? 10 total days. After 10, any more days constitutes a change in placement. The removal of a special ed child from school beyond 10 constitutes a change in placement. And you cannot change the placement unless you can prove that the disciplinary infraction was not a manifestation of their disability, which means you must prove that what they got in trouble for was not caused by the disability or was not directly related to the disability. All states, Loretta Benjamin, all states. Loretta Benjamin, all states. This is federal law. I don't care where you live in America or territories. What I'm going over applies to you. It applies to Puerto Rico. It applies to uh, St. Thomas. It applies to St. Croix. It applies to America, Samoa. It applies to Hawaii, wherever we at. It applies. United States and territories. United States and territories, the removal of a child with an IEP for more than 10 days constitutes a change in placement. Rule number one. Rule number two, you cannot change the you cannot change a special ed child's placement unless you conduct a manifestation determination. Rule number three, a manifestation determination is a meeting that is held by the IEP team where it two questions are asked. Two questions are asked at the manifestation determination meeting. If you answer yes to either question, if you answer yes to either question, you cannot suspend that kid. Did y'all hear me? If you answer yes to either question, you cannot suspend or expel that child. Here are the two questions. Raheem is about to be suspended one day, which will mean 11 total for the year. Before they can do that, before they can do that, they must call mom and dad in, sit down with the IEP team. If we suspend your child this one day, that will be 11 days. That constitutes a change in placement. We cannot change the placement unless we determine whether or not the behavioral infraction was a manifestation of your child's disability. So we have to answer two questions. If we answer... Yes to either question. We cannot suspend or expel your child. Question one. Was the behavior caused by or had a direct relationship to the child's disability? Was the behavior caused by or had a direct relationship to the child's disability? If you say yes, you cannot suspend or expel. If you say yes, that the, the behavior was a function of the disability. Let me give you all some examples. Let me give y'all some examples. Let me give y'all some examples. Your son is in the first grade. He has a speech or language impairment. He stutters. The other kids have been bullying him for stuttering. He told the teacher, teacher didn't do nothing. He came to school.